Okay, welcome back for more Lower Decks Season 4. We are up to the sixth episode now. Uh, last week, well, last week, <laughs> we had the Talyn folks episode, which was a pleasant surprise. I wasn't expecting to have an episode surrounding her because she's a totally new character this season who is phenomenal. So I'm glad she decided to stick around on the Cerritos. We learned that she was actually put on the Cerritos as punishment for being too emotional by her, her captain, which of course is ridiculous. And she's realized herself that it's ridiculous because she is, she's a committed Vulcan. And also she has Bendai syndrome, or at least we're led to believe she does, which uh, basically un makes her emotions somewhat unstable because you know Sarek, Spock's father, suffered from that towards the end of his life. Uh, and, but in, in Tillin's case, it makes her like broadcast her emotions and causes emotional instability with other people. So I think maybe people are thinking that there's more to it than that. Maybe it's not Bendai syndrome because from what I understand, that's pretty much fatal. So hopefully that's not the case because I don't want her to die. Uh, and they even mentioned that she's very young to be having Bendai syndrome. It's only 60 something. So there's probably more to it than that. But also we had uh, a little bit more sprinkling of what's happening with the, uh, that, the unknown ship. The three Betazoid spies, who were also a big part of last episode, who were very funny and played by th three uh, famous actors. Uh, they gave Freeman a, uh, a data pad and giving more information about it. So I guess now the Cerritos are going to maybe pursue it because there were sort of there's been you no know, talks about I guess around the quadrant of this thing that's going around destroying ships. So you know my my prayers have come true and I'm, we're finally going to get something with that. I guess I don't know. We'll have to see. But yeah, I don't know what to expect from this episode. Hopefully, lots of laughs, as per usual. Let's get into it. Kardashian disruptor, Klingon disruptor, Romulan disruptor. Why oh. are we throwing out so many Ferengis. Orders from the Grand here, come the, here comes the ship. The, they're not going to last long. Every single Alpha Quadrant species is getting pulled into this, I guess. It's going to be some big conflict, I'm thinking. Terrible! That's a Genesis device! <laughs> no, it isn't. It's too small. It's an updated portable version. These are used to terraform planets. You know, it's wild. Like, Genesis device, when it happened in Star Trek II, I kind of always got the vibe that after it was just sort of buried in, you know, black tape and nothing was made out of it since then. But obviously it's not the case because we saw the Genesis II being developed in Picard by Section 31 and there's... They're, they're being used kind of commonly, I guess, terraform planets now. I just never thought, I thought they were totally hidden away from the public after it went to shit, essentially. But I guess every time that things sort of happens, even in real life, some people get their hands on and try to continue the research and develop it further, you know, good or bad. I don't know what you're talking about. You're only here as a favor to my cousin. I never trusted you. Throw him out the airlock. They told me we would make a profit. I knew it. Wait, he was, the, so that guy, say his name is Heath, he knew what was about to happen? Interesting. Also, he was like rubbing one of those red balls that fucks with Picard, fucked with Picard's head in that episode, <laughs> the battle. What are you doing? Collecting on an old debt. <laughs> so maybe there's some sort of deeper conspiracy going on here then. Captain's log, Stardate 5890105. Hmm. The Cerritos has traveled to Ferenginar. Have we? Oh, they're going to Ferenginar. Have we? That's an interesting looking ship design. I've never seen one of those, I don't think. That's cool. Oh, the Ferengis are are applying to join the Federation. Wow. It's about time. It's about freaking time. We've had enough dealings with the Ferengis for them to be permanently included, inducted. Respectfully. Sir, the tenth rule of acquisition. Whoever's been attacking ships across the quadrant has disrupted their trade routes. Rom is desperate for Federation resources. Rom is the Grand Nagus now, huh? Is that something that uh, happened in Deep Space Nine, or was that was that just after that? How can I serve you, my thing? Well. I'm sorry, I don't know. But they have the the cast back, Rum and his wife. We also offer you the ceremonial invoice for the bust of good fortune. How much is oh my In the <laughs> ceremonial invoice? Does it get more Ferengi than that? <laughs> 
So they're at Ferenginar. I'm going to say it. Have we ever been to Ferenginar? I've heard, we've heard it mentioned a million times. Or is this another Orion thing where after all this time we're finally seeing the planet? Because I don't... But I would have been, I'm more likely to have seen Orion just from my familiarity with sort of some of the shows that I am to have seen Ferenginar because that's more DS9 focused, related. Starfleet has travel guides for all habitable planets. The file for Ferenginar hasn't been updated in years, so... Starfleet oh. gonna foot the bill for us to go to as many bars, restaurants... He's making them go around Ferenginar and basically uh, write a travel guide. <laughs> that sounds like a fucking awesome job. That'd be sweet. But you wouldn't get that gig if you were still Ensigns. <laughs> Take your... I'm only a lieutenant junior grade. I have everything to prove. <gasps> I need to make an itinerary. <laughs> Does he drink a lot of coffee? Mm. Oh, yeah. Tons. <laughs> I've never seen him drink coffee, have we? He, uh... Get along well with Janeway. Actually, no, he wouldn't. She would not handle his fucking shit. Or she wouldn't put up with it, rather. Be like, calm down, lieutenant. Science team. I'm pretty sure we can handle a fake romance. Let's go get packed, honey. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretending to be romantic partners. Are they going to actually end up being romantic partners by the end of this? Wouldn't that be a twist? I don't think so. It's platonic. So I think Tendi has a bigger crush on Tolin than Rutherford. What a, what a great line. It's what heaven would look like if God was stupid. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm so excited to wake you up from a deep sleep whenever it sounds like you're having a nightmare. And I'm excited to know how you like your hamburgers so I can order them for you and ask the waiter to take it back when they've made it wrong. Mm, this is a getting this is already getting to be getting to be a bit too much. <laughs> about nudity with our situation <laughs> you, you are what <laughs> what i'm gonna wear your gym shorts around and nothing up top good lord you're committing too much oh they were blushing they blush after i say i love you so they do have feelings for each other then Profit mini bar, the for profit toilet, the machine that charges you to pay for the toilet in the mini bar. View screen works. That's everything. A profitable toilet. Spend a penny. Spend a latinum. Lose a latinum. Spend a penny is go number one. Yeah, it did. And yeah. what is it if you do number two? A pound? <laughs> 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 Slug of Cola gives you ears. Oh boy. So Bond was never seen a commercial before. Yeah, I mean, he wouldn't have. They've probably been extinct for several hundred years on Earth. Lucky him. Hey, this guy. Is that a new pip I see? Uh, yep. I'm an LJG again. For now. <laughs> Congratulations! I never thought you'd dig your way out of crashing that Oberth. Ditto. Oberth. Are Oberth still in service at this time? They they were around in the original series film era. They, like the Grissom was an Oberth, right? It's kind of a cool looking ship, though. But I think it's about time they retired. Two shots of Cardassian tequila and a dagger of the oh. mind on the rocks. Wow, that's pretty. Hard. He's holding the freaking conspiracy worms. That's what this conspiracy. Admiral's reading in that TNG. Oh, do eat up, Picard. Raise your hand if you want a second. Disgusting worms. Mr. Grand Nagus. Just Nagus. Sorry, Nagus. Grand Nagus. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> but I was looking at the numbers and was wondering if they could be different. Different numbers? I'm not sure what Just you mean. Just a moment, my love. <gasps> of the membership application are locked but if we Thank open them up the input, captain but we'll be fine One, he's practically two, a child three strikes you're out grand nagas at the old ball game if they don't win it's a shame because it's one two three strikes you're out at the old ball game so they think Freeman thinks Rom is pulling one over on them to, well, what does he want in return? So uh, is his wife here, the first clerk? I can't remember her name. Neela or something like that. She's sort of, uh, maybe she's just using him. Or she's like sort of wearing the pants here. Not using him, I shouldn't say that. I just need to enjoy the crisp, refreshing taste of a sluggo cola. <laughs> Uh, they put commercials in the shows? It's like mind control. Gotta love product placement. Mr. History, you should know all about that. <laughs> the workplace sitcom where everyone is secretly in love with each other. I'm sorry, what? Oh, Blago, I don't know what to do. I'm secretly in love with Numa, but... Bormler is definitely the one who would get addicted to TV out of all of them. He's getting sucked in. Come on, don't. You're so committed to doing so much on this trip, and now you're gonna get nothing done because of flipping TV. Get off the boob tube. It's like who decided that hearts are the universal symbol for love? If anything, it should be kissy lips or gorgeous green eyes or something. What? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you're having a hard time keeping it in, aren't you, Rutherford? Both of you. There's no way this is gonna end well. Wow, look at them all dazzled up. Looking good, guys. Looking good. And you look, uh, captivated? Sorry, I'm trying to make my mind come up with a less intense word, but oh boy, is it extremely warm in here? Good thing they keep getting distracted by other things, because otherwise they'd just be blushing 24-7. <laughs> it looks so uncomfortable like in this. We'll be one with the lingerie! <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh. <laughs> the lingerie. You can still drink an alarming amount of glowing alien liquors, but I must call it. No, you can't take off now. We have even... She's got a uh, slug of cola hat helmet. Like uh, Smitty Werben Jaegerman Jensen. There is no Smitty Werben Jaegerman Jensen. Sure there is. He's buried out in Floater Cemetery. How did I just did it? I would... Madam, please. I'm just trying to enjoy an evening out with the rest of my biker gang. Sounds like this guy's all bark and no fight. Mariner, why? Why have you started a bar fight? He was the nicest biker on Ferenginar, and you had to clock him. And now you're, make, you're ruining your friend's time, too. Come on. He's making you feel like you're close, then delaying to make you frustrated enough to sign anything. I can't tell the council we failed at the simplest of tasks. Freeman is... I didn't realize she was so good at negotiations. She should be leading this, not the Admiralty. Well, actually, I guess her prior... Oh. Oh, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> the Starfleet experience. And they're playing the theme. It's, I guess, so it's like a pull off of the, the Vegas, you know, uh, park they used to have, Star Trek The Experience. I always want, wish that I had the chance to go to that, but it closed, you know, a long time ago. Probably before I was even a Star Trek fan, honestly. Did any of you go to that? It looks like we've caught two people lying about being a couple to defraud our company out of a discount. This is, of course, one of Ferenginar's worst felonies. Uh-oh.
Uh oh, you guys are gonna have to come in a little bit harder to your charade. You don't want to go to the subaquatic subaquatic <laughs> sulfur mines. They're gonna make them kiss or something, right? To prove it. That we are more in love than ever before. That's right, Smoopy. Oh, good. Now for that me. Don't you mean Moopsy? Moopsy. <laughs> Brother versus is so bad. <laughs> Tell the whole world oh my lord. <laughs> about each other. The chairs can detect if you're lying so be sincere. Hey, there's a Mugato in the background. Well, that's okay. I mean, they do know a lot about each other. Just because they're so close. Not because they're lovers, but they should be able to pass this uh, pass this test with flying colors. Or at least with green. Still picking fights to make sure you get hurt. What? No, that that's not what that was. I just want you to be careful. Look at that, a caring Ferengi. Oh, Dominion War Memorial. Oh, this. <laughs> nice, they're upset about the money they lost to the Dominion War. Really nice. Mariner, I love you, but you need to figure out whatever's eating you up inside. Yeah, and tell us, what is eating you up? So you can stop hiding behind your aggression, your tough persona. Reveal us, reveal to us. Uh, I like your hair too. Congratulations. You have completed the Ferengi all-inclusive newlywed discount package. Oh. I thought it, oh. I thought it was going to be far more difficult than that. They weren't able to pass it. <laughs> this guy with the, the freaky with the freaking eyebrows. <laughs> what a coincidence. Oh no. Maybe Mo's gonna blow their fucking charade. Get out of here. The closest platonic friends. Nice. You had to say it. Somebody get this bird out of here. You've been trying to break up our love from the start. Uh, oh, here we go, Tendy. Commit, Tendy, commit. You have the nerve to come down here and try to ruin our marriage? <laughs> Love me? Of course we do. Yeah, I don't though. You're <laughs> you're undeniably attracted to both of us. Still my shade of color to you, Tendy. Same color palette. Please don't break up because of me. Security, stand down. Now that we're divorced, we're going back to our ship and never talking again. That's right. Well, they played it off well, and now they've they've gotten out of it, I guess, by claiming they're divorced. We end up joining the Federation or not. And 10 points on the back end of every hollow novel program in perpetuity. Uh, I don't think Jeez, wow. This Admiral has blown the negotiations. They have free access to any Starfleet ship. That's a bad idea. Very, very bad. Of course. I've added one provision. Here comes the other shoe. So there so Freeman and her are gonna go head to head then. What do you mean? You owe us a fortune. Yes, contingent on bringing in a planet. But I didn't say which. Yeah, which planet is it? Oh, gosh. Kronos the Klingon homeworld? That's impossible! Uh -huh. Oh, I know. You forgot the eighth rule of acquisition. They have to bring Kronos into the Federation in order to get all of the negotiated for. Okay. Grand Nagus can't sign with a bunch of suckers and rubes. Captain Freeman, you showed me that there are those in the Federation who respect our culture. Oh. Oh, this is just like those, uh... Oh, what are, what are they from, uh... Rung the Grongovians from Strange New Worlds, where you had to... You had to act like them. You had to show radical empathy to convince them that you appreciated them. That's what Pike did. So the Ferengi just wanted people to that were... That had, you know... Strong enough uh, negotiating skills to pull over, pull one over on the Ferengi. Apparently, I get in fights for no reason, and I can feel my hangover in my entire spine. Well, why are you getting into fights? Ugh, you wouldn't understand. Tell us. Tell us. What's she hiding? <laughs> we got a squeeze in there. Hand me the spanner. Now this makes sense. <laughs> Natural chemistry. Oh lord. 
Or must have been watching TV for days on end. Oh, eight hours. People do that kind of thing all the time. You would be looking like that. Maybe if you hadn't ever watched TV before. Thank you, sir. I've authorized the local authorities to drag you out of there. Just go limp. Don't fight them. <laughs> of course he's drinking frickin' Coca cola Leave it to frickin' Ransom. Okay, that was episode six of Lower Decks season four, a Ferengi episode. Honestly, I've never been a huge fan of the Ferengi. Um, they've always just sort of annoyed me. And honestly, you know, because I haven't seen all DS9 where they're featured the most, and I've only seen them pr like, you know, prominently in like TNG, and they're always annoying in TNG. But obviously characters like Quark and Rom, you know, I'm familiar with them and Nog, you know, and uh, some of them I appreciate more than others, but yeah, I don't have the level of commitment to the Ferengi that I would if I had seen all of Deep Space Nine. And, you know, hopefully that'll happen eventually. Um, but it was cool to see Ranganar, which I, again, I don't know if you've ever seen in person. Um, and Rom and Lita, I think it's Lita, both return in their voice actor, or their original actors, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but yeah, from what I understand, Ranganar isn't actually part of the Federation yet. They've just officially signed a uh, application and they have to get Kronos. Uh, they have to get Kronos to join the Federation to get the rewards that, or the you know the money or whatever the acquisition that they agreed to. But I guess that also means they have to do that in order to be part of the Federation. That's the, the full acceptance of their application, I guess. Um, so that's gonna be tough. Maybe that's that's a cool idea though. I, I don't know how the hell the Ferengi would in a million years convince the Klingons to do that. But if they do that, that's awesome. And maybe that's exactly what we need for them to team up to fight. This, this thing, maybe we'll need, I mean, I think the Klingons would probably end up helping working with the Federation and all the Alpha Quadrant species would probably unite to deal with this threat if they had to, but if the Klingons join the Federation, that'd be a cool thing anyway. You know, it's been, we've been waiting for that for so long. It would be, it would be awesome. But this was a pretty, pretty good episode. Um, we had <laughs> Boimler get addicted to Ferengi TV. That was really good. Uh, but I think that easily the best part was what happened with Rutherford and Tendi. They were they had to pretend to be a couple, and you know they made all these jokes about oh we have no natural chemistry, and of course they, they had the most amazing chemistry. But it's strictly platonic, I I think. But even though when they were there were several times where they were blushing at each other, talking about how they feel about each other. So maybe there is, I mean, there's got to be some sort of sort of romance going deep down there. Um, I don't know if we'll ever see it flourish. Uh, I don't really need to. I'm happy with them just being friends. Um, but speaking of deep-seated stuff, we also have Mariner, who's apparently got something that she's some big secret or something she's hiding from everybody that's causing her to be more aggressive. I don't know if that's just talking about her mother or just her, or just her life in general, or if there's some sort of big secret she's holding. I don't know. I'm sure that'll be a, something that we learn about in future episodes. Um, but yeah, this was sort of a, a um, ensemble piece, you know, cutting between all these different chaotic things going on and true Lower Decks fashion rather than the previous two episodes which were character focused or like individual character centric I should say um, because it's always you know a blend of different things uh, of different character elements or stories going on uh, but this was a nice cacophony of stuff but yeah fun episode uh, we saw the Fringy in the beginning get killed by the, uh, the the weird ship that just go and run wreak and havoc again I guess we're uh, you know the Admiral and that's Admiral, that's Mariner's father, right? I'm pretty sure. Um, Freeman's husband. He talked He talked about, I guess, the Ferengi were pushing to be, the, be in the Federation even more because of what's happening with the attacks, uh, uh, the local attacks are happening with that thing. It's coming, whatever it may be, it's definitely coming. And I'm looking forward to it. Um, I keep saying this every episode because that's the thing that's being threaded throughout this episode. So I want to keep acknowledging it. So because we're getting little pieces, little pieces here and there about it, but we still have no concrete idea of what exactly it is, except for you know theories about um, Pete and Hamper and Badgy, which are probably correct. Um, maybe it's going to have this huge twist. There was a little, a little hint at something with this episode with the Frank at the beginning saying, he, you know, when that ship showed up, he said something about I thought it would. You know, we thought we could profit from it or something, and then they got killed. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's some sort of conspiracy going on. I don't know. Uh, we're, we're waiting to find out. But yeah, I enjoyed this episode. Let me know what you think in the comments, as always. Get the conversation started. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next episode.
No problem. We'll move on to the lingerie. Uh, sorry, can't late for dinner. <laughs>